If you never listen to another thing I tell you, please listen to this. Stop buying homes with your little girlfriend and your little boyfriend. So I love this lady. She's a lawyer and content creator, and she talks a lot about common relationship mistakes people make that get them into legal trouble. So I wanted to circle back to this topic because I've recently read two horrific stories on Reddit from women who were in bad relationships, but were having trouble leaving because they were living with their boyfriends in houses that they bought together. So I'm going to talk about one of the Reddit threads shortly and also discuss some better solutions to these situations. But just to preface, this is not financial advice. According to the law in most states, you and your boyfriend are not family. You going to buy all this real estate together is no different than getting a house with your college bestie or a random stranger off the street. Now, I'm not saying don't buy a home unless you're married. Not everybody wants to be married. Not everyone's going to end up married. And owning your own home is still a wonderful thing. Just don't buy a home together. If you're a female who's in a serious relationship with someone and you see a house or a condo that you want to buy, just get it. Just not with them. A good compromise or alternative for this is for you to buy a home and both of you live in that home together. Then after that, they buy their first home. You now have two homes for 5% down. You go to a lender and get pre-approved and your partner moves in with you and you're going to house hack. Most first-time mortgages have a stipulation that you need to stay in the home for a year if it is your first and primary residence. You need to stay in that home for a year as an owner-occupant before you move out and try to convert it into a rental property. During this time, your boyfriend should have finances in order to buy a home of their own. They're going to buy it on their own and you'll both move into that home after one year and rent out the first to help pay your mortgages. So why is this important? Well, what if one day you don't want to be together? This makes it so that you can part ways easily and don't end up in civil district court. It's a shame ending a relationship with somebody who you never even tied yourself to legally, but you end up spending the same amount of money like you would in a divorce because you went and bought a house together. This now brings me to the Reddit threads that prompted this topic. So this woman on Boru says, I'm going broke in my current relationship. So this poster says, I have a good job and make 60k per year. My boyfriend of five year owns his own business, but it isn't really profitable. We rely heavily on my income to get us by. I pay for two thirds of the mortgage. He pays the other third most of the time. I also pay our electric bill, internet, groceries, vet bills. And if we ever go out to eat or do anything, it's expected that I'll pay. I also have my car payment and other expenses. I've talked to him about the burden this puts on me financially, and he just gets upset when I bring it up. He also gets upset when I tell him I can't afford certain things or I'm trying to cut back to save money. I understand that he's struggling, but so am I, and I just don't see any end in sight. It's been five years and nothing has improved. I love him, but I don't know how much longer I can do this. I currently have $20 in my bank account, and I don't get paid until Friday. Any advice, recommendations, etc. is appreciated. Sorry, and I meant to say that this was originally posted in Poverty Finance and then moved to Best of Redditor Updates because there are several updates to this story. So some of the relevant comments to this post. People are saying that she's being taken advantage of and he's only complaining. OP responds, I dropped $200 plus on groceries this weekend, as I do most weekends. And when I got home, he complained that I didn't get certain things. I can't deal with paying and not getting any appreciation. They also said that, yeah, these tantrums are pretty common with him. People are asking, like, does this guy do anything? And she replies, he does help cook sometimes and he maintains the outside of the house, which I appreciate. People are asking if, you know, the business that he has, if it's a real business or, you know, they want to know what kind of business it is. No, P says it's a real business and a money pit. He definitely put in the hours, but the return doesn't reflect that. I'm not sure what he's doing wrong, but I don't have time to figure it out for him. Okay, so now in the meat, someone commented by the mortgage, you mean yours, right? Please tell me you're the only person on it. You need to cut him off, like now. Unless he is disabled, he is a grown adult and needs to get a job. Why are you supporting your boyfriend to grow his business that you have no right to? While he is getting his lifestyle subsidized by you, he is taking advantage of you. You need to stop allowing this because, say if in one year business takes off, it becomes worth thousands of dollars, you can be left broke with nothing. Is that really worth it? It's not. You need to tell him he pays half of everything, 50-50 going forward, or he moves out and you rent out the other space in your home and you won't be broke all the time. 
You need to really think of the benefits of your relationship because it seems like you make good money. Oh, pieces, thank you. He always asks when I'm getting a raise, but my income isn't the problem. Unfortunately, both of our names are on the mortgage. I'm tempted to put it up for sale, but I don't know how he would feel about moving forward with selling. It's a tough situation. And people are asking, why would you support a grown adult you aren't even married to for five years? It makes no sense. And OP says, I made stupid choices in my 20s. Okay, and then a month later, OP posts again. The title is, I tried to break up with him, but I couldn't. OP says, we had a long conversation last night about what's been bothering me. I can't deal with the emotional abuse and feeling like I'm not cared about. At first, he was angry. He was yelling, calling me ugly, telling me he never loved me, wishing he never met me playfully punching my arms and legs. Then he became incredibly emotional and started crying. He said he was sorry and admitted that something is wrong with him. I don't know what to do. I feel done with the relationship, but I can't stand seeing him get like that. I've never seen him cry. We're not married, but we have a house together, so it's complicated. I just don't know how to end this. Okay, and this is the second update posted the next day. Title, How Do I Get Out? I've been with my boyfriend for five years. Over the past three years, the relationship has gotten very ugly. I feel like I don't even know who he is sometimes. He's emotionally abusive, financially abusive, manipulative, and he recently started getting more physically abusive. Tried to break up with him over the weekend, and he said some horrible things to me and then proceeded to punch me, kick my legs, and put an electrical cord around my neck. He said he was just joking and playing around, but it didn't seem that way. He said he was just angry and that's why he did it, but he's sorry and started crying. I don't know how to leave him, especially since we bought a house together. I feel trapped, scared, and hopeless. So I'm going to kind of summarize the final updates because there were a few more because this woman was really struggling to leave this man. She essentially left him with no notice and moved back in with her parents. She said she's hired a lawyer to help selling the house and got a realtor. She said it's been an extremely difficult process, but she knows that it's for the best. Overall, she feels like a failure, but is also incredibly grateful for the support of her parents and from everyone on the internet. And she's grateful that she can finally start rebuilding her life and her financial situation. So to summarize, this lady was in an incredibly toxic situation that she felt uncomfortable leaving, which a lot of women do. It takes several times typically for an abuse sufferer to leave their partner. Add the complication of co-owning a house together, it becomes a whole other situation. This woman was literally strangled by this man. And as we know, strangulation in a domestic violence slash family violence incident, the chances of lethality increases by 750%. So she was strangled and her life was threatened and in the back of her mind, she was worried about this house and the difficulty of separating because of it. Now, building a man falls on many different spectrums and falling on the more extreme end of that category is the woman who recently admitted that she is both paying rent to her boyfriend of eight years who bought a house and she is in charge of fixing it up all while gaining no equity and not being on any official documentation. So she's both putting sweat equity in while helping support him paying his mortgage. And in this instance, I think it really highlights the cost of being a woman. A lot of people in the comments are saying, you know, this woman is thick. Mainly they're saying that she's building a house for a man and his future wife. Some people called it out as being potential rage bait to increase her engagement, but the girl ended up deleting her entire account. Because people had a lot to say about her situation. So as a woman, statistically, she's likely making 16% less than him on a regular day. Also, statistically, she has a lot of expenses that he doesn't have, e.g. feminine hygiene products that are taxed. Seeing that she's paying rent, he is probably not buying her feminine hygiene products and he certainly doesn't pay the tax on it. Not to mention, women often have higher healthcare rates. So she's going into this with less earnings, more costs, not to mention he is basically her landlord. If they break up, he can declare her a tenant and start the eviction process with a three-day notice to vacate. And in that instance, she gets nothing. So the boyfriend is getting all these benefits like the equity, potentially improvement in his credit score. Not to mention, she is doing a kind of woman's labor that is regularly given to men for free, making the home look nicer. And I realize a lot of guys do not value that, but I assure you they reap the benefits of it. Living in a home that feels designed where things are put away, things look nice, you have sheets, you have curtains, creates a higher quality of life. And it allows you often to be more relaxed, more comfortable, and to be able to do your job better because you're not stressed. And it is, in fact, a person's job. She's comping him multiple wages. The wage of design director, the wage of a contractor, the wage of a painter. 
Now, this woman has said, you know, she's really happy. Everything's good for her. And I'm saying for other women, think hard about your labor, all of it and your costs. Life costs more for us. We earn less and we have to be very cognizant of what we're giving away for free. Thanks again for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe and send this video to someone who really needs to hear it. I feel like we all know someone who really needs to hear it. This is day five of my YouTube posting streak. And if you would like to support my channel, I'm going to put my Venmo and my PayPal here. Thanks again for your support.